The online music revolution is partially responsible for over 7,000 record stores closing within the last decade. Despite this trend, Adams Morgan is home to three record stores within four blocks of each other. Smash Records owner Matt Moffat employs a different strategy to keep customers coming. Clothing and shoes, you know, that picks up the slack. I mean, we're a niche store, general music stores that relied on CD sales, they're pretty much all goner. The shelves at Smash Records are stacked with vinyl LPs and CDs seem to be taking a backseat. There has been a slight backlash against downloading. Different kinds of people are coming in here and collecting vinyl. Two doors down from Smash Records is Cricket Beat, where owner Bill Daly explains the comeback of vinyl. The artwork's bigger, it's more of a, it's more like an investment. Analog has a warmer sound than digital. Digital can have a tinny sound. Daily explains that vinyl is not the sole reason for Crooked Beat's success. Every average record store that existed, there's not as many left anymore, but you wouldn't walk in and you would see on display all these vintage bands or all these independent new releases, and you would see whatever the record labels are paying the stores to put up on the walls. Red Onion Records and Books owner Josh Harkavy tells us why they outlive Tower Records. They could not adapt to changing scene and music. You know, the places were huge. You know, having a smaller space, having books, records, and CDs, you know, it just it makes it easy for someone to come in, spend half an hour, and find something they're looking for. Video may have killed the radio star, but illegal downloading may be responsible for the rebirth of vinyl and the survival of the independent record store. Sherry R. Mirza, American Observer News.